you know, for you guys, I've always tried to be as well-rounded as I can here on the channel, taking a look at some G1 things and some Beast Wars items, taking a look at Generations, a scattered masterpiece now and again, taking a look at Studio Series, and even, even on occasion, when I'm lucky enough to get one in my hands, something from the Unicron Trilogy. This, of course, is the Transformers Energon Superclass Leader of the Decepticons, Megatron. And he's going to be our focus in the latest Got By True review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing splendid today. I know I certainly am. And I want to thank Andrew for letting me take a look at this guy. Andrew has over the years, uh, helped us with a, a few figures here on the channel, and this one is absolutely no exception. Now, this isn't my Megatron, so to speak. Mine is G1. That's where my kind of love of the franchise began, and is probably still stuck. But I understand and respect that for some people, this was their introduction to the Transformers franchise, and to them, and for always, this will be their iteration of the Decepticon leader. As always, I'm going to ask you to please like, comment, share, and of course subscribe. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, and L and Me everywhere. And now we can get into this guy a little deeper. He is hefty. He is bulky. He has very interesting coloration. And while he is named Megatron and does in fact lead the Decepticons, hmm... I feel like there are a lot of inspirations here from other characters besides Megatron. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. So thanks to good friend of the channel, we're getting an opportunity here to look at the Transformers Energon Superclass Megatron. Now, of course, this is outside of my normal realm of what I look at here on the channel, and I've said many times that I'm not a Unicron Trilogy guy, and no more I'm not. But to be fair, a little while ago, in episode 465, I did look at, thanks friend of the channel, Matthew, uh, the um, Energon Optimus Prime, at least the base version of it, because I did a little repair on the chest flap. And this is really the counterpart to that guy. Now this mold had kind of, I, my understanding had kind of two sizes, uh, this super class mode and then a smaller ultra class version. So this is the, the super class one, I know by the paint apps um, and the color of the translucent here. And uh, what can I say, I, I kind of consider myself fortunate to take a look at it. Of course, we're going to start off as we always do and luckily we can start off as we always do and take a quick look at the packaging first. And Andrew, being as meticulous as ever, has the package really well attacked here. We have a picture of Megatron over here. We have his name down bottom. Of course, we have, uh, you know, things about his conversion. We have notifications. We have Megatron here on the, the side of the packaging. On this side, we have uh, like a little bio and write up. And of course, we have on the back the product images, uh, including kind of like his souped up, we'll say, plane mode, and his kind of basic robot mode, and then his, let's say, souped up robot mode, I suppose. And he has instructions from a time when instructions were actually useful, and you can see the way the images look there. It's the same right through. I used to like instructions. I don't now, but I used to. Beyond that, we also had this. It was the Energon comic that came with Megatron. And the comic was your kind of typical comic. It was fine, nothing, nothing wrong with it. But on the flip side, oh, and you could see some, uh, you know, over here you could see some uh, of the other, I guess, figures and stuff that were coming out and whatnot. But more to the point, we had on the other side of this the catalog, and the catalog. Remember these things? We would show you the other figures out and coming up and stuff. This was fantastic. Boy, oh boy, as a kid, I used to look over these things that came with the G1 figures at least for hours, hours with excitement. And for those who love them, we have the ever popular collector card. And according to the stats here, Megatron is all tens. Well, we're about to find out if he's all tens for my scores as well. 
And I suppose we'll call this an accessory. It's the tank that he comes with. It's mostly just molded in black with a bit of uh, green highlighting given to it. It's nice metallic green paint. There's a like a kind of a navy blue button up top here that fires a projectile uh, that's in the the like you know uh, turret section. Uh, this doesn't transform. It doesn't turn. Um, I will note that right here we have an opening. We'll use that later on for something else. And down here, we do have two little sections that open here. That's what allows it to attach to his arm. We'll see that later. But for now, I will note that we have uh, different holes. Where is it? Um, I think here and here and here and here. If I'm not mistaken. They're really, I believe, peg holes. But they do serve a function and purpose. Nevertheless, it is a little tank accessory thing. It's supposed to be, my understanding is, it's supposed to be reminiscent of his alt mode from Transformers Armada. And finally, after going through all of that, we get to the main event, which is, of course, Megatron himself in his <laughs> Cybertronian plane mode, I guess. I don't know, a lot of people are not big on Cybertronian alt modes. Like, with the Siege line, I want them to look like they did, you know, in the cartoon. This is not a robot in disguise. In my estimation, like it's cool, it's sleek. I get it. You know, it can be interstellar and stuff. Like I get it, man. It's fine. But I like. I think you have to be a certain type of fan to really appreciate these. Like what more alien type of alt modes. And even in season three, I get it. There were a lot of weird alt modes. Blur. You know, what was that? You know, what was that? So I get it. It's just. Sometimes they, they strike okay, sometimes they don't. This looks cool for playing. It's just not my idea, my version of Megatron. What can I say? I'm old school. Nevertheless, it does look cool. It does have heft. And on the top, you will notice we have one, two, three, four uh, peg holes. I believe that they are able to be Minicon ports. I think. I think. Don't quote me on that because I'm... I'm uh, this is not my... Forte. I'm. Uh, I heard that this guy has six minicon ports. I'm assuming it's those four, and then the ones out here on the wingtips. There may be others. I'm not sure. Uh, but nevertheless, you can attach the tank to the top where those four ports are using the uh, screw holes that I pointed out earlier. And this thing, once it's on, it's actually really secure. And it will look like that. If that looks cool to you, I guess I'm. I. I I, I, yeah, okay, uh, <laughs> we can give him like a, he's, you know, super flying, super speed, offensive mode, I don't know, I don't know what they would call this, is there actually even a name on this mode? I don't know, I, I don't think there's actually a name on it, uh, by the way, He has, you know, like lights and sound type of things. Is that the only one? I feel like there are other buttons on him besides that. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. It also fires this thing, but I just, I didn't want it to fire. I, I will tell you now, it is a very strong uh, spring in there. It fires quite a distance, even now, all these years later. Solidly constructed, man. The guy is hefty, the plastic feels fantastic. I'll give it that. This kind of assault mode, I don't know what this is. Like it looks, I guess it looks cool. I just don't know what it is. Um, he has landing gear that roll, no, you know, no less. The, the little wheels actually roll on it. I love that. Like there's a lot to like here. It, I'm saying it's weird and it is, but it's menacing. It does look cool and there is a lot to like here. If nothing else, it's at least an intimidating Decepticon, even if it's not my idea of Megatron. I'll also say this, he also seems to have a lot of inspirations from a lot of different Megatrons, so to speak, and he seems to have inspired later versions of Megatron. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm not going to give him scores right now. Uh, we'll wait until we get him in his robot mode and talk about the articulation and his paint apps and whatnot then, as well as, of course, the transformation itself. So how do we do the transformation itself? Well, we're going to begin by removing, see what I mean? Like this is on tight. 
we're gonna remove that tank piece for now. You don't, I guess you don't really even need to, but I think it kind of helps, at least somewhat. We're gonna close this down as well for now, and close this down as well for now. Again, just so it's out of the way, and we're gonna take these wings, and we're gonna just bring them up and out of the way. Uh, by the way, when we go into the play mode, you may notice that up under here there are two holes. They go down over two pegs that are on this section. So that's what secures the wings in place in this mode. The conversion is actually not hard at all for this guy, as big as he is, being a super class figure. Really, what you're doing is... Actually, I guess I should do it this way. Bring this down, but it's spring-loaded, so it's not going to want to stay down. So you bring it down... And you straighten out that leg, and then you bring out the foot, and it too is spring-loaded. And then you bring the leg down the rest of the way. You do the same on the other side. You straighten it up. You bring it down. You bring out the feet. I'm going to stand this guy up and reposition the camera. And boy, oh boy, does this guy get tall. We'll end up shrinking him slightly. First, put down the landing gear up there. You can put the landing gear down there and down there as well on his legs and have that done. Then you can take this entire plane section and fold it down on his back. We're even going to move these. Now, they can go up and forward, like they can go back and forth. Even in plane mode they can do this so you can like I guess aim it at other aircraft and aim it down at tanks on the ground. We'll put them down for now. They're supposed to be up, but we'll put them down for now just so we can get in closer on this guy to kind of finish the conversion. For now at least, I'm just trying to keep everything kind of within frame. So we come then and that whole shoulder section comes out. This whole shoulder section comes out. I guess you can kind of fold those. By the way, these can go in, but they're spring-loaded, so I don't really know why they would go in. I don't really see anything that holds them in. I don't know why they're spring-loaded. Maybe somebody else does, and if you do, hey, let me know. We can bring back this flap that his head is on. It solidifies down here, uh, kind of going into the back. We can bring up his little kind of earpiece things. We can even, if we want, open these out just to make them like bigger and cooler I guess I suppose and then last but not least you can open up I mentioned two little uh, almost like doors on the bottom of the tank tread you can open them out and this will clip on now oh actually before I clip it on over his form there is one other thing I want to show my mistake so what was it I wanted to show? Well, you may notice down here we have a piece of plastic that is a sword. Using the tank, we can place it in here. And yes, it makes a noise. And then we press this like blue button and it releases the sword. And just to show it, as where this blue button fires the projectile and makes a noise, we can also push the sword in and it makes a slashing sound and it does light up red though I don't think you could see it very good there. Maybe not. But it does have a little, I guess, LED that lights up red. Now then, as I was saying, we can open these pieces up and slide it on over his arm. You can have the cannon piece aim down or you can have the sword piece aim down. It's up to you, me being the traditionalist I am. I tend to opt for the cannon piece aiming down, but in essence, he's wearing a, a, a tank on his arm. You know, not that that's weird, not that I'm judging. But in the end, boom, here you have the mighty mammoth and impressive Energon Megatron. So now we can start giving this guy some scores, and the very first thing is his... Paint apps, how accurate is this guy to the animation? Highly, highly accurate, actually. The feet, the legs going up to the thighs, to the 
uh, pelvis and the kind of entire torso, all of that is pretty accurate, except, except where you see kind of red highlights, they should be yellow. Uh, going up to his shoulders uh, and his arms, they're all pretty accurate, except that there should be a black band kind of around the, the at least half of the forearm. And his upper pylons here should be a, maybe arguably a little more gray, maybe, potentially. But maybe this is supposed to be this gunmetal, possibly. Besides that, like, besides for like a couple of red highlights that are supposed to be yellow, maybe uh, arguably a black band there, it's pretty close. It's certainly closer than the ultra class downsizing is. I'm going to say that his paint apps, while not perfect, are pretty, pretty close. If you know the character, they're a solid nine for sure, maybe even nine and a half. What about the transformation? The transformation is super simple, especially on something this big. And honestly, I'm going to give that a, a 10. It's fantastic. It's perfect. Everything is logical. It makes sense. The only thing that doesn't make sense to me is why those hands are spring-loaded and retractable. I don't know. I don't get it. What about the articulation? Well, this is an all right pose here, but long story short, a lot of these Energon figures are bulky. And whether or not that hurts them or not is probably open to debate. This guy, he has a head that can go left and right. It can't, well, I guess it can look down, but you're kind of starting to untransform it to look down. Cannot look up. The ear piece thingies move. The arm can go forward and back. It can, by rights, go all the way around. It's just the wing tends to get in the way, but you can get the wing out of the way and bring that all the way around. The arm goes all the way out to the side. We have 90 degrees at the elbow. We don't seem to have any sort of a bicep swivel, nothing at the wrist. Uh, we do not have a waist. Uh, as big as these wings are, they can get out of the way, which is it's a nice feature. Um, he has a gigantic, en enormous backpack. So if you don't like backpacks, he's not the dude for you. Getting this back out of the way. Uh, this arm over here got all the same movement, but now you have a, a, a tank on it, so you have to account for the fact that that's going to limit things a little bit. All of this, by the way, is strong ratchets. So that's, oh. So nice, so, so nice. Oh, look, that fell off. That was my own fault. Putting that back. On, um, uh, yeah, the ratchet, so, so nice. That being said, I'm not a lights and sound guy. I wouldn't have the batteries in this because it would get on my nerves. Uh, the legs, they can go, forward about that far, which I guess is acceptable. They're not going to go back too far though because you have so much junk back there. If you get that out of the way, it's still not going back too far because the, the back is actually there. Um, the legs, your knee can bend that way if, if you want it to. I don't know why you would want that. The knee can also bend 90 degrees, but the thigh is so short that I don't know how useful it is to have it 90 degrees. Kind of like the Siege Ultra Magnus, like it's there, but it's not the most usable thing because the thigh seems short. Although in a straight up stance, the thigh doesn't seem short, so go figure. The legs, however, can go all the way out to the side. He can do full splits. This one can also go out all of it on ratchets. Uh, the feet, the toes can go down, the heel can go down, but it's all spring loaded, so it's just going to go back. For the time, the articulation was pretty good. When you compare this to, you know, the Energon Optimus, you compare this to, I don't know, Vector Prime, Primus, like that era, it's not bad. It's really not bad. Uh, it's more than G1, maybe not as much as Beast Wars, but these are ratchets, hinges, and swivels rather than ball joints. No ball joints on this guy, which is good because... I, it would hurt this guy so much. He has so much weight that you need ratchets to handle it. I'm going to say that the articulation is... A bicep swivel would be nice. Uh, having the legs, maybe the thigh a little longer proportionally would be nice. 
a waist would be nice. It's good for the time. Overall, it's about a seven and a half. It's, it's an all right. You can get a few good poses. Certainly solid and chunky, fun to play with. But you got to take it for the time that it was produced and for the limitations that it has. Could he use a modern day update? Yeah, he probably could. It probably would be welcome. So we have a nine and a half. We have a seven and a half. Overall, he's getting uh, an eight and a half. When we talk about the transformation and throw that in the mix, that I said was a 10. So his eight and a half all of a sudden becomes like a, a nine point ooh, two five or so, roughly 9.35. It's a solid Megatron, a solid figure. It is, if you're into like Unicron Trilogy stuff, then this is a fantastic iteration of the Decepticon leader. There's no doubt about it. And I thought that it was kind of, I'm not necessarily gonna say appropriate to show him now, but kind of in keeping. I mean, we just recently started seeing people, uh, as of this recording, getting their hands on the Cybertron update in the siege line for Optimus Prime. Galaxy upgrade Optimus, I think it's called. Again, that's not for me. I I'm happy that people that are fans of the Unicron trilogy are getting a little bit of love. And that's why I try and cover this stuff because I, man, we're all fans. We all come from different eras, but we're all fans. So I appreciate, you know, the fans that this guy helped create and that for some people, this will be their version of Megatron, even if it's not mine. And if it's your version of Megatron, I can't say that it's a bad version to have at all for two reasons. One, because it is a solid toy. It's a fun, big, bulky, menacing, solid Megatron. But two, because of where he gets his inspirations from. Because for me, he gets his inspiration from a few sources, a few G1 sources, nevertheless. Case and point. They wanted to make a Megatron for this series. They said, well, Megatron is kind of gray. There's your G1 Megatron, represented here by Hegemon, but... Megatron is gray, gray. The body type, however, is undeniably reminiscent of Galvatron, represented here by the Unique Toys Mania King. And you can see the similarities, the head crest, the way the body is, the uh, way the abs are sectioned off, even the kneecaps are very, very similar. And in terms of the coloring, the mix of the green, blues, grays is very reminiscent of, I think, Thunderwing, represented on the far end by my custom Thunderwing, using the Nitro Zeus mold from the last night and the little Thunderwing Type Master that came with, I don't know, one of the box sets, box sets Chaos on Velocitron or Siege on Cybertron. I don't remember which one he came with. But I feel like if you went back to the cartoons, you went back to the comics and the source material that designers for the Energon Megatron took inspirations from at least these three and kind of mashed them together. That being said, this Megatron in his own right and respect, I think has also influenced later iterations of the Decepticon leader. And case in point, Megatron can be a weird Cybertronian jet. We saw it again, an idea that was used in the movie line because the first movie Megatron was a weird Cybertronian jet. We saw it used again in the Prime, um, like, continuity. There you go. There's what I was looking for. When that Megatron was a weird Cybertronian jet. And Megatron can also be a tank, as evidenced by the Titans Return, my custom Titans Return um, Megatron, and my custom Siege Megatron. So in the end, here's the thing, here's the takeaway. It's a solid toy. It's not part of the fandom or fiction that really appeals to me personally in my own personal collection, but I absolutely understand and respect that it may very well appeal to you, and I very much appreciate Andrew letting me take a look at this guy. Here's the thing. While I'm not a Unicron Trilogy fan myself, it is undeniable that some of the best toys that we've ever gotten, both for weight, for build quality, and just playing for fun, came into that line, and this guy is absolutely no exception. And here we are once again, and I'm not going to pretend that my arm isn't starting to get tired under the weight of this guy with all of his fantastic clicky ratchets, thick, robust plastic, and altogether heft. I mean, dude's wearing a tank on his arm. 
you know, that alone is a lot of heft. There's a lot to like here. Even if you're not into the lights and sound gimmick and don't bother to put batteries in them, there's a lot to like here. We have, like I said, super solid construction. We have certainly an interesting plain alt mode, albeit weird. We have a lot of influences here. And in fact, this guy's been repainted in, I believe, black. He's been repainted in purple to look very much like Galvatron. And there are nods here to G1 Galvatron, nods to Thunderwing, nods to Megatron, and probably a few others in the mix. It all came together to give us one rendition of the character that for some people is considered a classic. I like the characterization. I probably like the fact that, if I'm not mistaken, I think the legendary David Kay was the voice of this guy as well, and I loved him as Beast Wars Megatron. Yes. Um, it's, there's so much that comes together here that I can understand why people really like him. Is he for my personal collection? No. Is he a solid toy? Yes. Is he a solid rendition of the Decepticon leader? It's certainly believable that this guy could dominate over all of the Decepticons and be the most powerful of them all. Their Emperor of Destruction, if you will. Anyway, let me know if he's your Megatron and what you think about this guy. Whether you like the Super version or the Ultra version. You know that I always appreciate you guys giving me some of your extremely valuable time. It is so very, very much appreciated. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.